Good afternoon. I'm Laureen Garraud, Director of the TV Division at Read Me Them. We're very proud and delighted to be honoring Russia and Russia's creativity throughout MIB Junior and MIBCOM. We are doing this through a big spotlight on Russian content, animation here at MIB Junior, and drama at MIBCOM. Today's world premiere is a highlight of this special tribute to Russian animation. The School of Russian Animation has earned its glory through its 100 plus years of history. And now with the help of modern technologies, animation from, animation from Russia is finding growing international success. Yes, <laughs> we're all happy about that. <laughs> and it will continue to do so. We're very excited to share today with you the world premiere of the new animated series Heroes of Envel, produced by Digital Television Russia and distributed by Signal Media. Heroes of Envel is a fantasy series for adventure-loving 8 to 14-year-olds created by Evgeny Golovin and Anton Langshakov. But before we begin the screening, we'd like to warmly thank the Chairman of the Board of Digital Television Russia, Dmitry Mennikov, General Director of Digital Television Russia, Kirill Lisko, and CEO of Signal Media, Mikhail Kovalchuk. Thank you so much for choosing MIP Junior for this world premiere. And now please join me in welcoming Mikhail Kovalchuk for a few introductory remarks. After the screening, the creator of Heroes of Envil, Anton Lanchakov, will join him for a discussion. But now, let's welcome Mikhail. Thank you for the introduction to the audience. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you? How was Mip Junior for you? Uh, I hope you'll understand my English. It's terrible in the morning, and uh, in the afternoon, it's uh, even worse. Uh, you apparently think, why did they give him a microphone? Uh, his English is so bad. Uh, uh, the explanation is very simple. I'm CEO and I have bright shirts so you can easily find me during the market. Before we start watching a cartoon, uh, I'd like to talk with you a little bit about the future. You know, in Russia today, we are the leading company within pay TV market. We are um, producing more than 20 TV channels for the adults, documentaries, movies, uh, TV series. Our domestic success uh, uh, in the pay TV market holds approximately 40% audience share. Despite this fact, uh, for the last few years, our strategic development priorities are the creation of media projects for children from 0 to 15 years of age. So we have a big interest in creating kids' brands, and I think we all do. But why kids? It's kids who will determine for the consumption of media. Just think, kids starting school this year will be retiring in 2075. Kids from 0 to 15 are the curious of the further media habits. We are calling them forming audience, uh, because this is the audience uh, which will form uh, for the consumption uh, which will form consumption media system in the next 10, 20, 30 years. The key difference of the modern young audience is uh, that they don't have to adapt to the new media. This audience was born and grows up with new media. Today kids uh, watch, play, socialize and share in real and virtual world worlds. So we built our product's ecosystem both online and offline following kids' media consumption. Kids watch us within TV screen. In Russia, we manage uh, four kids' TV channels, and we are the only non-terrestrial broadcaster which provides originally produced animation to the audience. Today, we have uh, 10 animated series in production, and we will release two, three uh, each year more. Kids play our games. Our mobile apps uh, that are based on our animated cartoons have been downloaded over 20 million times and in over 100 countries. Uh, I even don't know the names of such this, of that many countries. Uh, kids play uh, and immerse our VR world. In January, our first uh, interactive VR game, The Magic Lantern, was released. And now we don't just have VR games, but Russia's first VR cinema. Uh, 
kids watch us on our digital platform in the middle of last year we developed and launched SVOD platform uh, in Russia for kids uh, and uh, it has proved uh, success in Russia uh, I oh I am almost uh, I get to mention about Multimir Festival we have organized and uh, created and organized an annual Russian children's uh, entertainment festival and this year called Multimir and this year Multimir Festival had over 120,000 visitors. We are in constant contact with the kids audience, indeed this audience is the most demanding, the most progressive and uh, the most grateful. Uh, we enjoy taking on interesting tasks and uh, making truly wonderful TV. You know, we love to um, create uh, preschool brands uh, and for the preschool audience. But do you know a very interesting fact? Preschoolers grow up and become young teens. So we have mentioned this fact and we started to create brands for the young teens. It's very interesting, this audience uh, has their own eye their philosophy, their interest. Uh, what else? Uh, teens uh, already have life experience and all of them think that they are adults. And uh, what is the most interesting thing for us that uh, this audience uh, has their own world. We try to consider all these aspects and today we are happy to present you our animated uh, series for the young teens, Heroes of Anvil. Let's start the game. And now I'd like to introduce to you the creator and the director of the show, Anton Lashakov. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for watching. So nice to see you here. Um, I will shortly tell you what inspired me um, on starting this project. Because uh, on this project, we try to have everything uh, grounded in reality. So. Uh, even this screensaver here, it's uh, grounded in reality, and it's true. Uh, this screensaver here is based on our uh, average production day in the office. And uh, yeah, uh, that guy over there is our leading animator struggling with uh, freelance workers. You know that, right? You know that feel. Uh, so um, the truth is, we have so many talented artists working on this project, and uh, uh, they all uh, put a lot of heart in this project. And uh, yeah, sorry, can I say heart? Because uh, by heart I mean not literally heart, yeah? Although uh, we did make some sacrifices to ancient gods, as you do, obviously, to start any project, do you? No? Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, by heart I mean passion. Yeah, but don't worry, we didn't sacrifice any, anim any animals, only humans. So, uh, by heart I mean passion. And uh, my personal passion what drive me on this project uh, as a characters. Because uh, when we started this, I didn't want uh, Heroes of Anvil to be a uh, stereotypical cartoon. I want uh, all, uh, all, all the characters to be based uh, on some real ones. I don't want cartoonish stereotypes. So I uh, pick up my friends, I uh, choose up my fr uh, school friends and based uh, every persona, uh, every personality, every character on them. Uh, as simple as that. I write about my friends. That guy, yeah, we have to wait for him. And uh, the guy with a sword. He's actually my best friend uh, from a school. And uh, the other guy, uh, the guy with a uh, staff, uh, Phil, his name, he's based on my uh, schoolmate friend, uh, whose name too is Phil. And he, uh, the truth is, he does speak like this. He does speak in a uh, gamer's language, which is bizarre. You can't understand him. But still, uh, I uh, listened to him and I uh, took up his uh, language to incorporate him in this movie. So. Um, yeah, I want Heroes of Anvil to be real, uh, as real as you can be in a 10-minute story uh, with robots, magic portals and zombie vegetables. Anyway, uh, because of that, uh, the writing of dialogue was easy for me. I, uh, because I knew my friends so well, I uh, know exactly what they are going to say uh, in any situation. Uh, but, and there's a huge but, we, didn't, uh, we, we did lie to you at some point because uh, if my friend uh, the guy with a sword, my best friend, would find himself inside a computer game full of deadly traps and hazards. Uh, he wouldn't whine like here, like, oh, where am I? No, he would go, uh, and uh, here, here I intended bad language joke, but uh, 
she told me I shouldn't go with bad language here. And so uh, you get the idea. He would uh, go with pretty bad language. Uh, so we're not entirely faithful to real life, but anyway, we try our best. Uh, and uh, the thing why I, uh, why I love this project so much uh, is because of age of our characters. Uh, we have 14 year old, 14 uh, ish years old uh, kids uh, who go to school and play video games. And uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, I remember that age pretty well. Uh, when I was 14, uh, I didn't go. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was pretty bad actually when I was 14. I, I tried to act uh, cool and mature and. Uh, uh, and grown up, uh, but the truth is, I was very vulnerable as a kid. And uh, just this, that's pretty much our story. We have kids who are uh, vulnerable, yet they think they are already grown up and uh, cool and mature. Uh, so, this is uh, how, how do you say, come of age story, uh, gender, school drama basically. Uh, and uh, when I was 14, uh, yeah, I was 14. Uh, when I was 14, uh, I remember I was uh, hanging out with my friends and uh, I tried to act uh, as I'm a deep philosopher of soft sorts. Uh, and I tried to, you know, uh, sound cool. I told my friends like stuff like, wow, Placebo Tex and Brian Molka. They, they sound so deep, so emotional, that affects my things so well. And then I went uh, back to my home and uh, be like, uh, Mom, uh, can I get $20? Yeah. And my mother would go, yeah, sure, sweetie, but why do you need $20? And I was like, uh, well, it's for Alex, birthday present, for birthday present for Alex. And my mother gave me that sly smile, like she knows me. and. Uh, said, yeah, sure, sweetie, here you go, you have $20. Uh, and then I leave and my parents exchange, exchange glances and uh, my mother and my father uh, nods to each other, not to each other, and mother says, yeah, <laughs> birthday present. And father goes like, yeah, it's for booze and cigarettes. And the truth was that I was uh, going to buy some stupid video game on the $20. So, yeah, that's just me. So 14 is a best age for showrunner. And I mean, I mean, not literally for me, uh, because I'm not 14 now, but uh, yeah, at some point, in some way, I still feel like I'm a 14, that's true, in a way that my mother still gives me money for booze and cigarettes. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, that was a joke. Because the truth is, my mother still gives me money for girls. And by girls, I mean my wife and my daughter. Uh, anyway, yeah, I will quick, <laughs> I will round this up. Um, so this is school drama, coming of age story. We have, uh, we, we are going to have in upcoming episodes a lot of adventures and uh, comedy, and uh, at some point we're gonna have romance uh, uh, pretty quickly, actually, in a sixth episode already, uh, and uh, it will be first love, obviously, and will be romantic or embarrassing or both, it, as it was in my case. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, we have heavy references in uh, pop culture, in modern culture. Uh, you maybe uh, notice we have uh, John Lennon and Nirvana posters on the wall. Uh, no, didn't you? Yeah, bad for you. We have John Lennon and uh, Nirvana posters on the wall, which is cool. Uh, we have uh, a lot, uh, I would say dozens uh, of secrets and Easter eggs hidden all throughout episodes. Uh, and um, we, we even have secret uh, coins hidden in this background, so you may start looking for it because it will uh, close down shortly. Uh, if you didn't notice, I will show you where we have coins in this screen saver. And we have a lot of uh, Easter eggs uh, scattered through every episode uh, uh, of our series. Now, uh, to end up on something something serious. We're gonna have zombie vegetables. How cool is that? Okay, now that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be very pleased to answer you and Mikhail too, he's uh, over there. Uh, and uh, that's all from me. You may enjoy your evening. Questions. No questions? Uh, yes, we should say thank you for the audience yeah. and thank you for your time. And I hope you will love this animation and, your, and our audience will love this animation. Thank you. See you.